Lawrence Pay has kindly agreed to be interviewed on uh, this, which is his first convention at DoctorCon. Lawrence, uh, Hello. how have you enjoyed the day? Very much confused, <laughs> confused <laughs> at the moment, but. Probably the interview is doing, I imagine. Yes, I, I get very, f I get very fast with interviews usually. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, of course, it is, it is your first convention. You've, yes. you've not encountered you know, the, the this sort of. No, thing no. I well, it's I really because I've been out of the profession for about six years now, mm. and uh, by sheer chance, I I did a Doctor Who. I think I want to call the two Doctors, mm -hmm. and I found myself back again. <laughs> But I've left again now. <laughs> yes, but I mean, of course, you. Uh, I imagine that when you were playing uh, Sexton Blake, you made quite a few public appearances. So oh yes. You, you've got the. You know, you, you. I suppose you're prepared in some ways to, you know, for the, the kind of response that uh, you might get. Yes, it, it's it's a worrying thing, though. I, you know, being an actor, a lot of actors can talk and chat about everything on earth. I find it very difficult. Um, but if you're, I mean, when I was doing Sex and Blake, we used to do, I used to open garden fates and church bazaars every weekend for about four years. And one got into the, into the run of it, you know, it, it became easy. It was really only a question of breaking a bottle of champagne <laughs> over the bazaar, you know, and say, this bazaar is open. But when one, I, I write now, you see, mm. and I sort of, as, as it were, retired from, the public eye, and so this becomes much more difficult. I find myself in front of a camera, <laughs> although I've lived in front of a camera for nearly 50 years. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's fun. It's mm. fun. The great thing is that one meets all the nice people that one has met in one's past. Mm. And they are ni so actors suppose, and nice people. Yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, I suppose other than that, you'll see, it also helps uh, bring back memories of yes. your times on. What was, I mean, in this case, Dr. Holmes. Yes, quite, and, and meeting a lot of people like Nick Courtney, whom we've mm. just met again. I haven't seen him for about 30 years, I suppose. And the strange thing about it is that when one, uh, one meets these people again, it's almost as if you met yesterday. Mm. It's a strange thing with, a, with the acting profession. I mean, we were always told at the beginning, when I, was, when I first started at Vic, you never say goodbye to anybody in the theatre because you're bound to knock up against them <laughs> later on. Which is very true. Of course, I mean, uh, also you've now worked with, I think, uh, four Doctor Who's, is it? Three. Um, Three Doctor Who's. The first one was the Gunslinger, which was the apparently the least successful Doctor Who they've ever had. Well, <laughs> and it was only because we were all that, trying... That's all they were saying, but apparently uh, <coughs> recent uh, figures and things have actually proved that wrong, so had it they? wasn't. Yeah. Well, we, we, you see, we were, all, we were all English actors doing American accents, and we can't... We really can't do it. <laughs> the English people really can't, any more than the Americans mm. can do the English. Yes, I, mean, I mean, it's one of those things. And it was, I didn't think, a very good show insofar that the production didn't really take off. I mean, I imagine it would have been studio bound as well. Oh, yes, it was all studio. I mean, we, mm. we even had horses and so on in the, in the Ealing studios. And mm. again, it, you, you can't do it if you're not out it, with, with horses, you need to be in the great outdoors. But we had a terrible set and we had to sort of line our horses up outside in the corridor, you know, mm. and the horses weren't at all happy about it. Actually, I mean, it's, it's quite strange. I mean, you, while you've actually only appeared in Doctor Who three times, you've, I think you've, I mean, because you've, you've actually act, you've acted with William Hartnell, uh, Tom, Baker. Tom Baker, and then and Patrick Colin. Trout and Colin. Colin. Yes, and yes. Um, Pat I've known for years, mm. of course, in the theatre. But, uh, and, and Colin, I worked with Colin in Shakespeare, funnily enough, he was mm. very good. But um, the great thing about Doctor Who is that it's fun. Mm. I mean, you know, people have said to me, why, why, why are you doing Doctor Who? Because, um, you know, I'm a bit pompous and <laughs> Shakespearean and so on. And they say, uh, uh, why do you do it? And I said, because it's fun. And it's so nice to sort of let your back hair down and do silly things which you've never been allowed to do. We all want yeah. to do them. I mean, we all like to go around in funny masks and so on, but nobody ever lets us. <laughs> <laughs> this is a wonderful opportunity. Yeah, I mean, one, one thing that uh, has always been said by people who have worked on the show is that whatever the time they were working on the show, there was always a, you know, a very good atmosphere. Yeah. Would you say that, 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 uh, that the atmosphere that you encountered in the 60s was still prevalent? when you came back to do these two stories yes. in this decade? Yes, the only difference being that uh, the first one, The Gunslingers, was live. Mm. 
and that is always, I mean, there's always a tension in atmosphere that you cannot get rid of, and, and, and dear Bill was um, always a bit fumbly, because we, only, mm. we did it in a week, you see, and because Bill Hartnell was playing the Doctor, he had an awful lot to say. Yeah. And of course, I know, because later I did Sexton Break, and because he's the lead, you had reams to learn and three days to do it in. And of course, I mean, it, with, with you know, with a, a character like the Doctor, a lot of the and a lot of the dialogue is sci gobbledygook. Scientific, a lot of scientific gobbledygook, exactly. And and so you know, there was more tension then. And of course, we not only we had accents, we had guns, which needn't go off. You know, they you 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 fire a gun and it and it misfires. What do you do when the thing is live? Somebody hits a piece of plywood with a cane in the back because and you hear this terrible click and somebody realizes that uh, the miss thing is misfired so yeah. clouts clouts piece of ply, plywood with a cane well by that time you've broken up but in later shows of course when it's all recorded it's much easier and if you if you do dry up you stop and start again and I we we had a, it was very funny in the last show the the uh, the two doctors, the two doctors, that w we had, I had, I was playing a character called Dastari, and uh, he becomes a goodie after having been a baddie, mm. and there was no moment when we could see the change, yeah. and I argued about this, well not argued, I said to Peter Moffat, we never get him, we don't see anything happening to him, why does he change suddenly, you see, and he said, he said, well we need some more lines, don't we? And I said, well, yes, we need just a few lines to bridge the gap, as it were. And he said, right, you're an author, you write them. And I went home that night and I wrote a speech, a short speech of about four lines, which put it all beautifully. And, and you could see that this man was thinking, I'm going to join the goodies. And do you know, I couldn't remember the lines. <laughs> they were my own lines. I never said mm. them once until, the, until we were actually in front of a camera. And I was terrified. I thought, I, they were such wonderful lines, in my opinion, I suppose, that I, that I couldn't remember them. And Peter used to sort of say, never mind, Larry, we'll hope you'll remember them on the night. And I did them once, and, and that was all right, but I couldn't have done them again. And they were my lines. Of course, um, I mean, now you, now you do write, and uh, occasionally you, you do radio. Yeah. I mean, do you, I mean, do you see, a uh, future where, where you write books more than more than where you act. Oh yes, I will. Ne I don't think I will ever act again. Mm. I, this this was my swan song, and not, I, not even for another holiday in Spain or somewhere. <laughs> no, I don't think so because one gets to a stage when if you've been out of it for so long, your nerve goes. Mm. I mean, I'm not like the John Gielguds of this world who are still going marvelously, but then he's never given it up, and his brain is is bright. But when you write. You write slowly. You you think this is not the word I want, mm. and you might look up thesaurus. And so everything is is deliberate. And when you're um, learning a part, that's what you've got to learn. So you you know you can't. Uh, it, I and like I am now, I can't think of words. I can't speak fast enough. And I think it's because I've spent. Well, I've written written eleven books. You see, and this is what, 11 years mm. of work. And one slows up mentally because one is working in a different atmosphere. You come back into the theatre and it's a different world altogether. And I think, and by that I mean, I can't remember the lines. I would, wouldn't dare go into a big play on stage anymore. Unless it was something like, say, Macbeth, which I know backwards and which I played once. And so I wouldn't have to relearn them because they're there somewhere at the back of my head. But give me a part like King Lear and say, play it now, I couldn't do it. I'd have to turn it down, much as it would make me sick. Mm. So, uh, and the voice goes anyway, you know, if you don't use your voice, it, it sinks and, and you have to keep your voice in tip-top condition, certainly in the theatre, because it's got to project and so on. Uh, I, know it's, I know it's a very, very cliched way to end an interview, but uh, what are your plans for the future? Yeah. You know, Write books. books. Yes, I'm, I saw. I was doing. I did a year with the BBC Radio, and really because I got stuck on a book. And um, now, having done that, having finished with the BBC, I'm now just 
I hope we hope to move somewhere up to Shropshire somewhere for the next next um, during the next year, and then I shall just go back to my books, which I will love. I hope it all goes well. Bless you.